let's talk about high availability or HA. What is it and how can we make our systems highly available? The answer to the first question is relatively easy and straightforward, but getting to the second, making our systems highly available might be tricky or not. We'll see. Having an HA system means that the system is available and responsive most of the time. I'm not going to say available all the time, that is impossible, but most of the time. And most of the time in this context means 99% or 99.9 .9 or 99.99 .99 and so on and so forth. When we talk about HA today, we are usually talking about how many nines somebody has after the comma. Now, to become highly available, there are some prerequisites like, hey, you need to be fault tolerant because if things fail without recuperating themselves, we cannot be highly available. We need to be scalable because if there is only one of something, again, we cannot be highly available. If there is a single point of failure, when that point fails, again, we are not highly available. Now, how to become highly available? can mean many different things and the details depend on the type of the system you're running. So we are going to limit this expose to Kubernetes. How can we make Kubernetes and the things running inside Kubernetes highly available? That being said, the logic behind making Kubernetes and everything inside it highly available is the same or very similar to the logic you would apply to something else, whatever that something else is. So when we are talking about Kubernetes, we have three major pieces to stick together. And that's control plane, worker nodes, and our applications or the stuff running inside of those clusters. By the way, if you're not familiar with Kubernetes, control plane is the brain of the cluster. It dictates what goes where and what is happening and what is not happening and so on and so forth. And worker nodes are the nodes where your applications are running. Those two can be mixed as well. We are going to discuss that as well. But for now, that separation between brain and uh, workers should be enough. Now let's start with the control plane. If you have only one node acting as a control plane, it is obvious that that is not HA. That cannot be HA because when that single node fails, there are no other nodes to take over and we are not available. Now whether it takes a second, a minute, an hour or a day to recuperate the failed node doesn't matter because by that time we already failed to accomplish any decent HA availability. So one node acting as a control plane is a no-go. Nobody does that anymore. Actually, when I think about it, there are quite a few service providers that give you Kubernetes as a service that has only one control plane, and you do not even know that there is only one, but that's what they have. I will not name who they are, but there are such providers, and they're actually one of the more popular ones. So make sure that wherever you're running Kubernetes, if you're letting somebody else give it to you as a service, you need to have more than one control plane, even though you usually don't have a say on how many there are, there will be, and usually the price dictates such a setup, you know, you want something very cheap, so you get only one, because the difference in the price is so big that you're probably fine with it. Anyways, one control plane node is not enough for HA, and whether you need HA or not, that's up to you. Now you can say, hey, how about I put two nodes as control plane? That should be HA, right? Because we have two nodes and if one of them fails, the other one can continue doing whatever it's doing, right? Is that what you're thinking? If that's what you're thinking, you are wrong. You are really, really very, very wrong. Here's what's happening. When we have more than one node acting as a control plane, then the majority of nodes need to agree on something before committing to that something. So if you choose to change state of some object, to create some object, to delete some object, to do something, anything in a cluster, the majority of the nodes need to agree that that is the correct thing to do. And they're doing that because the information about that potential change needs to be propagated to the majority of nodes so that they know that the information they collectively possess is correct. And here's the trick. Majority means that there must be more than 50% of the votes for something to be committed, for something to be approved. And if we have two nodes, then majority is two, because it must be more than 50%. One out of two nodes would be 50%. More than 50% means two nodes. So if either of the two nodes fail, there is no majority, and then we have split brain problem, meaning that the information propagated in nodes 
cannot be necessarily always accurate because we cannot have majority of the nodes agreeing on something. Because there is no majority to decide what is correct. Is the information in this node correct or that node correct? If there is only one node and the system thinks that there are two, majority cannot be established if one of them goes down. So essentially, having two nodes is no different than having one node acting as the control plane. If we continue increasing the number of the nodes that form the control plane, then we get to the magical number three. With three nodes, we can have highly available control plane or highly available decision-making machine. If one of those nodes fail, then we still have two nodes. And if we need majority, 50% plus one, that means that we need 1.5 nodes, that's half, plus something. That means that two nodes can form the majority out of three in total. If one of them goes down, the system is still operational. So three nodes acting as the control plane is the minimal number of nodes a Kubernetes can have and guarantee the chance of being highly available. If two of those three fail, we have a problem. So we need to think about strategies, how to decrease the possibility of two out of three nodes failing. We're going to get to that later. For now, if one out of three fails, we are HA for a simple reason, because the other two can continue working without any disruption. Then you can say, how about putting four nodes? Four nodes should be better than three, right? That should be even more HA or more available. But that's wrong. That's not better than three in any form or way. That's a waste of resources. You would be wasting one server for no good reason. And the explanation is relatively simple. It's simple math, right? If you need majority to be available so a decision-making process can continue working, then the majority out of four in total is three. Because 50% of four is two, and you need more than 50%, that means three. So you're still in a situation that you can compensate the loss of one of those four, but you cannot compensate, you cannot allow yourself to lose two out of four, which is the same situation as with three nodes. With three nodes, you can lose one, you cannot lose two at the same time. That can lead us to a simple conclusion that the magical number for the nodes of the control plane is an odd number that is greater than one. Three is great, five is great, seven is great, and so on and so forth. Actually, seven is not great at all. Three is good, five is good because they're both odd numbers and uh, five is even better than three because that means that we can tolerate disruption of two out of five nodes, but having seven is already very expensive. And by expensive, I do not mean only the amount of money you need to pour to have those additional servers, but also in establishing that quorum. Because all of a sudden, at least four nodes need to agree on something at every given moment. And the more nodes need to agree on something, the more time it takes to reach that agreement. So go with three nodes unless you have a really big system, and in that case, five. More than five is too slow and, frankly, not really necessary. Now that we established that, at least from the perspective of the control plane, we need three nodes or five, then we need to talk about something that goes on top of those three nodes, and that's external load balancer. We cannot send requests, you know, to communicate with Cube API directly to a node because that node might not be available, right? We might be in the process of upgrading it or maybe it failed and then it was brought back up uh, but has some different IP and so on and so forth. So we need an external load balancer on top of those, making sure that our requests are going to that load balancer and then they are forwarded to any of the healthy nodes. And if one of the nodes stops being healthy, then the job of the load balancer is to start redirecting requests to some other node, the one that is still healthy. But that means that load balancer is a single point of failure. At least if you have a load balancer that is running on a single server, maybe with Nginx something or HA proxy or something like that. And that means that you need multiple servers for your load balancer, or if you're running in cloud, then you don't need to worry about it because most cloud vendors, cloud providers have already solved the problem and they have highly available load balancers. You do not even need to know about it. They are simply there 
they're running, they're spread across the globe and all that stuff. Cloud providers give you highly available load balancer. And if you're running on-prem, then you need to figure out and potentially pay somebody to have HALB. If its job is to be a single point of entry, then we need to make sure that that single point of entry is highly available. Otherwise, it is a single point of failure. Now, let's talk about data centers. If you have only one data center, then you need to put all your control plane nodes in that data center. And that means that it doesn't really matter whether it's one or two or three or five, because when that data center goes down, everything is down. It's pretty obvious that you cannot have HA with one data center. And here's where things become complicated for on-prem type of users. Two is not good enough either because of the problems I mentioned before, because if you have two data centers and the cluster is spread across those two data centers, then failure of one data center means failure of 50% of something, 50% of control planes, and that means that you don't have HA because you cannot maintain quorum 50% plus one in case of a failure of one data center. And it's not only that, because those two data centers need to be very close together, yet independent from each other. So it needs to have independent networking, independent electricity, and so on and so forth, so that any type of disaster would affect only one data center. But they need to be close to each other so that there is no high latency. If they are too far apart, then communication between nodes running in those data centers would be too slow. And we normally call it zones. We say, hey, you have a region, let's say East US or West US or uh, Ireland or uh, Asia or whatever. And then we have data centers within the same region that are sufficiently close to each other so that there is no high latency between them, yet they are independent from each other so so that disaster affecting one does not affect another. So two data centers is not enough. You need three and they need to be close to each other. They cannot be spread across the globe because that's too slow. And three data centers is a magical number because that means that those three control plane nodes can be spread across three data centers. So failure of a node is not a disaster. Failure of the whole data center is not a disaster either because at any given moment we always have two data centers and that means two control plane nodes running in those two data centers giving us high availability. So if you're on-prem then think about it, can you really be HA? If you cannot have three data centers that are independent from each other and but close to each other, then you cannot be truly HA. If you're running in cloud, you need to make sure that your provider supports multiple zones in the same region. AWS does that, Azure does that, Google Cloud does that, Alibaba does that. Small guys like DigitalOcean, Linode, and what's or not, they do not have multiple data centers in the same region. They cannot be highly available. And I repeat that Linode and DigitalOcean and similar small providers cannot be HA. And if your provider does support HA, you need to make sure that you are choosing to run regional clusters. Some of them offer you zonal cluster by default. You need to say no to that you need to choose regional cluster, which means that your cluster is spread across multiple zones or multiple data centers within the same region. And then we need to talk about worker nodes. Those are the nodes where our uh, applications and other resources are running. If having three control plane nodes and any number of worker nodes is too expensive, instead of reducing the number of control plane nodes to reduce the cost, Think about combining worker nodes and control plane nodes into same servers. It's better to have three nodes, three servers that are acting both as control plane and worker nodes than having, let's say, one control plane node and two worker nodes or the other way around. So if you can afford only three nodes, better have them act as both control plane and worker nodes than separate them but have less of each. Now, that is not a good solution. I would never recommend combining control plane nodes and worker nodes together, but if you cannot afford it, that's what you get and it's better than the alternative. However, if you can afford it, go with three control plane nodes spread across different zones or different data centers within the same region and separate worker nodes. And you should have a minimum of three worker nodes, one in each data center. 
So three control plane nodes, three worker nodes spread across data centers or zones. And then from the infrastructure perspective, we have everything else, meaning storage should be highly available, which can be tricky to accomplish, and all the other resources, everything needs to follow the same logic. Everything needs to be available across data centers, it needs to be multiplied, it needs to be replicated, and so on and so forth. And finally, we have our own applications or third-party applications we are using. And that one is easy. If you want your applications to be highly available, it's not only about running it in highly available system, but they themselves being highly available, and that means that they need to be replicated. If an application cannot run in replicated mode, if it cannot have more than one replica, then it can never, ever be highly available. There are many examples of third-party applications, which I'm not going to name because I'm trying to be nice today. Anyways, there are many third-party applications that cannot be replicated. And if you're not sure whether an application you're having or you're using is one of those, the answer is very simple. Can you scale it up? Can you change the Kubernetes manifest and say, hey, I want three replicas, you know, replicas colon three or five or whatever number you want. If it cannot be scaled up, it cannot be highly available. And scaling up is very easy with stateless applications. If your applications are not sharing state across different replicas, then it's very easy. You just say, hey, I want 57 replicas of this app. It's easy. If they're stateful, then it's very complicated, extremely complicated for many reasons. You cannot mount the same volume to all those replicas because typically we cannot have multiple processes writing on the same file system. So we need to figure out how to replicate not only instances of that application, but data as well. Because if we have multiple replicas of a stateful application, then data needs to be spread across all those replicas or put in a shared space, but that shared space would have conflicts when writing to it and things become very messy. And the solution is very simple. Do not create stateful applications. That does not mean that you do not have state, you do. But use third-party applications, databases, to store the state. Do not store the state in your applications. Store the state in databases and make sure that those databases can replicate themselves, can share the data and do all the magic to be highly available. So your applications should be stateless and state should be in a database. And that database needs to be made in a way that it can scale up. And if it can scale up, and if it can share the data between replicas, then it can be highly available as well.